we are expecting to to be realistic. We are expecting to lose against Danmon again. I think they are really strong. Uh, but we can win into against Flamengo. We are also expecting to win against them in tiebreak also. And we are also expecting Danmon to beat Flamengo as well. Ooh, have we got a new prophet in the house? Welcome to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Nostradamus has spoken, but will his and Royal Youth's dreams come through? Or come true? That's going to be the question. <laughs> Seven teams have already made it to the knockout stage, Egypt, and this is the fight for the final spot. Yeah, uh, and I like how honest Ahmad has been in his interviews. Uh, there's a couple of them back to back, but this is a 0 3 start of the season or start of the world champions for them, and then equalizing, and now in the tiebreakers, and he's confident going to the back end of today. Yeah, but now the question is can he actually do it when it counts? Because we've seen so many teams, like everyone was behind Mammoth, and then they just like fell flat. And now we got behind low key, and now they fell flat. So now I'm looking at Royal, I'm like, do you back them? Because if so, I think that they might fall flat. That's going to be the question, and hopefully we'll answer it by the end of the segment, definitely by the end of the game. Look, Royal Youth, they just beat Flamengo to force this tiebreaker game. In the standings, one and three, one and three. Yesterday, or rather two days ago, Flamengo absolutely crushed Royal Youth. In our pre-match, we said we wanted to see Royal Youth do something different, mm -hmm. and they did. Uh, it was the Fiora up top. It was the strength. Armored finally sort of showing up on the stage, as it were. So what do they do this time? Yeah, I think a couple of things to mention, right? I think no longer is the Flamengo uh, beat over Royal Youth really relevant, right? That was a couple of days ago uh, and really just not relevant here on today's play. They've already got the victory back. You mentioned the Fiora. It was also the Blitzcrank. This is a Royal Youth lineup that has flexible picks and they're willing to flex them here on this stage. This isn't something we've seen before and I'm expecting them to take it to Flamengo. And it kind of comes back to what we were talking about early on in the week, that stylistically, this should have been for the Turkish team. It's about the top side of the map. And it was Armut that finally came through. And for the Brazilian squad, it's about the bottom side of the map. And it felt like it was BRTT Sivir versus Armut's Fiora. Yep. But this time around, the rules have changed. It is red side. That means that Flamengo will have the counter pick, which means that they can make sure that they don't have a blind Camille into a potential Fiora that they've now seen. I don't think Armut gets this type of uh, ace up his sleeve again. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple of things, Soaz was pretty critical of the fleet footwork, uh, Camille. We did also just see it in the last game with HKA versus Loki. Uh, but the other big so thing... Does, does that make you think it's a bit of a meta thing? Because Soaz also mentioned, you know, he hasn't been playing sort yeah. of the world's patch, world's meta, world's team. Yeah, potentially. Like, it has to be coming from somewhere, whether it's, like, seen in solo queue scrims, behind the scenes. Obviously, if there's any sort of consensus between two differing teams, then it has to come from somewhere. But the bigger thing when you, when you mention red side is Flamengo versus... Royal Youth, in that Blitzcrank game you mentioned, like the Sivir, that was a reactive pick. It's yeah. blind Thresh and then, oh, we need something to deal with the Blitzcrank in the early stages. Let's get a spell shield on BRTT. That is not the blind pick, like the Draven, let's go, let's play through the bottom side. And now with red side, they have ultimately that last decision to make. But there's now three picks uh, out of the ones that BRTT has shown where he's got a Caitlyn, he has a Sivir, and he has his Draven. He's not going to get his Draven. I don't want to see him go back to the Caitlyn or the Sivir. Not that he can't play them, but they're just not having the same effectiveness as something like the or the Kaisa who have been dominating the tournament. Uh -huh. So I'm curious what BRTT is going to grab if, as uh, Bryce says, that they're going to try to be more proactive of securing we are getting the dominant 2v2. I think I would expect a Zaya Rakan if they can. Red side is pretty hard. We've seen hot property on like first pick Rakan, first pick Zaya. That wouldn't be out of bounds here from Royal Youth. So maybe they want to go in that direction, but if they can is another story. Now, there's going to be a very difficult question because if that's one of the options that can go, that will unlock this bot side strength for Flamengo and then you know, in due course, BRTT. How much pressure is there on Royal Youth draft strategy now? Where do you prioritize your bench? You've seen the Yumis, the Kianas, uh, now against BRTT, the Draven that you arguably have to, you know, sort of target on blue side. And maybe that opens up some more picks. Like that Nico is something that Flamengo have gone back to time and time again. Yeah, and whether they do go back to it again, I think is another question. But you mentioned like the pressure, I think tons, right? We've seen just at this tournament alone, and you can go back into other domestic, other international tournaments as well, in a Innovation at this point in the tournament with these stakes up for grabs is very hit or miss and you either look like a god or you look like an idiot, right? If they pick Blitzcrank, Fiora and then just team fight, get wiped, it's like, okay, well, we're not in this tiebreaker situation 
and you just look stupid on the world stage. So I think it is super rough for them. And I think it's going to kind of go back to basics for both these teams. For Royal, that means you're going to get a scaling pick for Pilot. They would love to also grab something like the Zaya for him. He's shown that he can be a phenomenal player. I know he's famous for his Ezreal. I don't want to see it again. I want something a bit more stable in terms of its DPS output and not as reliant on skill shots or team fight setup. And then I want some sort of strong side of the map for Armin. Make sure that Closer and Armit have the superior 2v2 on top side, and Pilot can just play defensive on bot side. Yeah, absolutely the case. As you can see on your screen right now, Royal Youth, the representatives from the TCL, they stood up, they're doing one more huddle. I assume we're still a few minutes away from the draft, but let's step back from these specific teams and talk holistically. The CB LOL, as a region, has somewhat sucked for a while. There has been high expectations, high hopes. The teams and the players that the CB LOL fans wanted to see on the international stage have often not been the team that has represented them. All of that pressure is on that squad side. TCL, on the other hand, they've been growing. They've been one of the sort of breakout regions. So regional rivalry is insane in this game. And I want to quickly touch on Brazil, since that's the squad that you brought up first. And you are correct. The fans have been clamoring to see BRTT and Flamengo take the stage. And every single time they went to game five in the finals, they fell down, except for this time. In high intense situation, they pulled out the clutch game. They were able to make it here. They have red side, and that's who I'm backing. I'm sticking with the earlier analysis. I do think that Flamengo is the stronger team. I would go the opposite. I think maybe a contentious opinion. Momentum in their favor right now. I like the fact that they are willing uh, to be a little bit versatile. They're willing to take some risks on the back end of the last two uh, times these two teams met, and I'd put a lot of faith in that. Well, as you can see, Royal Youth have just sat down to get ready. I have split predictions from my analysts, and I'm just going to tell you who I want to win. BRTT and Flamengo do it for the CB LOL and advance to the knockout stage. The loser will be going home. Let's find out which team it'll be. Big stakes coming into our final game of the group stage. And don't worry, CB LOL fans, I have just confirmed that Trevor Quickshot Henry will be escorted out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Completely inflammatory marks about uh, the state of Brazilian League of Legends. Unfounded. Sir. <laughs> Except, to be fair, it was 2017 the last time we saw a team from the CB LOL get close to making it out of plans groups. That was Team 1 Esports lost in the tiebreaker when it mattered most. And now we see Flamengo in a similar situation, Ender, where everything is on the line. It is do or die for these two teams. So the winner goes on to the knockout stage. The loser goes home without much of anything to show for it. You know, just one win apiece for these two teams at the moment, it becomes so crucial. And coming into this game, it, it's really interesting because we saw two very different styles of matches with these two teams. The first time, it was very skirmish heavy, you know? Uh, Flamengo playing a heavy pick priority type of game. And the next game, it was much more about the side lanes with supports on these big playmakers. So I think returning with Flamengo to the red side, it'll be really interesting to see what type of style we get. And I think it's gonna come so much down to the top lane matchup. When push came to shove, that felt like the big breaking point across the map where the Fiora was able to generate so much pressure and create so many problems. Of course, there were also some fantastic individual performances from the remaining members of Royal Youth. But I think now that Robo can be set up comfortably, knowing that they have the luxury of that red side last pick, things are just going to get a lot easier. The question is, is Draven going to be banned? I personally would love to see Goku go back to the Zoe if it's a viable pick. Or do we see something completely, completely different? I mean, it'll, it'll be really, really fun to see here because, you know, the first time they faced off, it was the Zoe coming in as a last pick. So it was very clear that Flamengo wanted to prioritize Goku and making sure he could have a counter. Uh, but really, when we look at this, I think there's a few things these two teams want. I think you want support playmaking. I think for Flamengo, you need to neutralize that top lane matchup where Royal Youth want to go hard up there. And Closer must be on a playmaking champion. If he is on something that scales, I don't think Royal Youth actually have the firepower early on to hold on against some of the fast playmaking of Shrimp. Draven as well. The band's actually very fast here. Rek'Sai, Gragas, opposite side. The Pantheon, the Kiana, and one more Flamingo Esports. Quite correction. Team 1 did in fact make it out of groups. They failed to make it through the best of five. Still, maybe right. Flamingo 
can be the difference makers, as we now see a potential Azir first pick. Lee Sin, though, actually Whoa. immediately locked in for closer. I like this a lot. Now, almost a mirror draft in terms of bands coming off the first time these two teams played when they were on the same sides as this. Roll Youth swapping out a Yumi band, though, for BRTT's Draven. He might not to get to play it again this entire tournament after he used it to beat Royal Youth the last time these two teams faced off. And for Royal Youth as well, it's important to make sure they're holding their top lane pick. They don't want to blind something like the Renekton. Instead, make sure you can try and get a counter matchup, but that probably won't happen when the other side of the map is instantly going to be the mid lane shown with LeBlanc. Mid lane is going to mean that Flamengo can save their fifth pick and make sure that is the one that puts Robo in a good matchup. Oh, the LeBlanc and now the Nocturne locked in to follow. And a difficult position for Flamengo to be in with two comfort picks taken off the board. The Nocturne is an interesting one. Will not be able to generate the same amount of early impact, at least in theory, compared to a Lee Sin. But there is always options. Level 6, very powerful. Already, Flamengo are showing that they have the ability, especially to take control over mid early and then spread that out to other lanes with this power 2v2 in terms of killing top or bottom lane post level six, as you said, on this Nocturne. Could even look for more of a split push setup if LeBlanc is running teleport. And Nocturne, of course, is always going to give safety to someone like Robo in a side lane. Even if Robo is in a weak matchup, which I think he can get a counter pick for, you're always going to be able to have that semi-global presence of a Nocturne to back you up. It's just fantastic. It's punishing any kind of split push pressure. Thresh locked in now. I like it for Lucy. Had some fantastic plays in the previous games. But going up against the terrifying duo that is Zyrocon is a lot. I think it's going to be a win here for Flamengo on the bottom side of the map with the Thresh lock in. Lucy loves this champion. When Lucy is on Playmakers, good things usually happen for Flamengo. And it also just is an added bonus that it is a good matchup up against the Rakan. Can even sometimes in later game situations force Zaya to burn her Feather Storm by just throwing out a hook too. So Lucy does have the ability to start off fights. And it feels like another very pick heavy draft coming through from Flamengo. And now we see the focus from both teams. Ender as we enter the second ban phase. Very clear that the LeBlanc, they want to secure an ideal matchup on the side of Flamengo. They're banning away the Lusan most likely will ban another mid laner on the opposite side, taking Kaisa, the other S tier AD carry, off the list. Have to see what BRTT goes back to. We've seen him play a decent amount of Ezreal domestically. The Sivir was his choice in the previous game. So BRTT needs to be on a marksman that can deal reliable, consistent DPS. I think the Kaiser moving that is very intelligent from Royal Youth. I look at other picks. You know, he went to the Sivir the last time these two teams faced off. I'm not a huge fan of BRTT on the Sivir. Maybe something like a Tristana, though, who could have some laning presence alongside the Thresh could be a strong choice for BRTT. A lot of pressure, but Tristana gets moving as well. But you got to try to match the scaling of Zaya at least to a certain degree. And the Caitlyn, interestingly, okay. will be the last ban there. Ooh, I actually like this even more, potentially, if the Ash locks in. That's just so much global initiation tools with the Nocturne, with the Ash. Nocturne can hide the arrow as well from BRTT, but we'll wait to see that get locked in because already I think Flamengo do have the tools to start off fights now with the initiation as well as that consistent DPS to back up the burst poke of a LeBlanc. They're putting together a formidable team composition. And I love seeing an Ash arrow in the hands of BRTT. We've seen so many teams hesitate to get fights kicked off, hesitate to get things started. BRTT will not be a man who is afraid to pull the trigger on the Ash arrow and get something going. Downside is, though, if you make a mistake here, we'll be very punishing, because now we're seeing the likes of a Gangplank. Very safe blind pick, likely to be picked up by Arma here, and this will make that life much more difficult if he lands the correct Cannon Barrage. So now Seal wants a winning matchup up against LeBlanc, because if you can control the 2v2 around mid, especially before Nocturne hits level 6, you will have the superior fight there and can then maybe move around the rest of the map. A Vladimir would give them the late game scaling options if this was to go significantly later on into the game, but it wouldn't have that same ability to roam around the map. But the Twisted Fate absolutely does. I love this move from Royal Youth because now with the Gangplank Ultimate, with the Twisted Fate ulti as well, they are matching the globals of Flamengo and they have the stronger bot lane fight because of that Cannon Barrage coming in. Now, been a long time since I've seen Twisted Fate versus Nocturne Ender. Some interesting <laughs> global, semi-global interactions here. What will the final pick, though, be for the top side of the map? And it looks like back to the Camille for Robo. Of course, a pick he seemed relatively comfortable on in the early game. Doesn't necessarily have the same kill threat coming in from Armut there on the Gangplank. Maybe he can turn something around here in the early landing phase. But this is both compositions now locked in for one of these teams' final game on the world stage.
It's going to be a really good one because both sides have immense team fight output as well as pick tools. This feels very similar to a lot of other drafts that we have seen between these two teams where there is playmaking in multiple roles right now. I think Royal Youth have a lot more playmaking in the early levels, especially around that middle lane. But eventually, if Nocturne can get some kills, that side lane threat is going to be immense. Who Ender so many times. We've had, uh, you know, one or two very explosive early games today. Curious to see if Shrimp can keep up the pace on a pick like Nocturne. But inevitably, closer's Lee Sin I, has to be respected. And I think at the same time, if something doesn't happen pre-level 6, something will definitely happen at level 6. The Ash Arrow, the potential for an engaged cross-map if necessary. This is it, the final moments for one of these teams, the final game in the group stage. The Flamengo fans still here in force, ready to support their team. And like kind of the final call for the storm of this game. Loser goes home, Dracos. It's Brazil versus Turkey. Winner with a chance in the knockout stage to move into the group stage at Worlds. This is going to be a bloodbath. Here's your fun fact stat. It's been a long time since BRTT has played Ash. The handshake's coming out. Clap, clap. And uh, 2017 MSI Play-Ins was the last time. Doesn't play it domestically. Pulling out the big guns. Last minute picks. And now we see the level one invade coming in. Trying to fight for vision. They'll spot Tolerant coming out when he leaves, however. This ward. We've seen miss people walking into the bush, but I think that was definitely in range to spot closer. I think they're trying to climb it walking in. So now the rest of Flamengo are on the way here. Now, they do have Seal in the mid lane to try and spot out any type of rotation. So recall should just come through for now. And as far as Flamengo know, there's no Rakan in the area. Didn't see him pop over the wall. So the fact that he recalls here will be unbeknownst to them. Sneaky, sneaky Rakan. Of course, not too bad to have him move in, use Sweeper. Look to deny some early vision, place down some early vision. We'll allow them to track the Nocturne in the early game. We'll make it that much easier for Closer to find some sort of early gank. And a lot of uh, good setup on the map outside of the top lane. Ooh, Goku going for a fun little trade right there. That specifically is because he is rocking the uh, Electrocute, whereas Seal is going to be loading into lane with the Kleptomancy. But still Seal taking the better of those traits. Both mid laners will have access to Corrupting Potion to sustain on through here. But realistically, I think if we're looking at early game playmaking, the emphasis is going to be on Closer, as you mentioned. And specifically around mid lane, I think there are pretty good tools. The reliability of that gold card does mean that if Goku is pushed up a little bit too far in lane, you can try to, you know, hit confirm Lee Sin's uh, Sonic Wave, and that's a whole lot of damage to be able to come through. But I love this pathing from Closer, knowing that Shrimp is going for the fast level three red into Krugs. Now Closer has passed straight into that Flamengo blue buff and can split the map. This says even that with a pushing bottom lane from Flamengo, he could try and get around them and find a gank. And that's why Pilot and Tolerant are sort of letting this lane push in towards their side. And additionally, just very tough to match Ash in the early laning phase in terms of push, but they will get the level two first. Lee Sin is also on the bottom side of the map. The level two now matched from BRTT and Lucy. Multiple camps stolen away though for Closer. Pure advantage. Nocturne has not set foot in the enemy jungle. Closer still won't tick over to level two and he doesn't have a ward so he can't ward hop all the way behind him and come for a pretty nasty angle. Instead, he will have to take the time to walk through river and by this point, there has been a ward place. Now Closer will reveal himself on the vision, but Shrimp Nocturne. has come down here, and that means, well, he's going to know stuff has been taken, but not be able to respond. Hook does connect. Tolerant. He's just going to try to walk away. Good damage oh. coming out. Big slow on the ash after the patch. 20% in the early laning phase. Shrimp now stepping forward. Gold card comes out from Seal. The damage is there. They move in. The Sonic Wave does not connect. The Spell Shield won't block the tower shot, but Shrimp will walk out. Seal's flash. Forced out. Shrimp knew he had the level advantage over Closer, even if Felicin was in the area and had time to force a play. I like the creativity in pathing coming through from Shrimp. And now without a flash up, that means when Goku hits level six especially, there's gonna be a lot more kill threat around this middle lane. But meanwhile on the top lane, Arma stacking a massive wave. Robo 9 CS to the 24 of Arma. Steadily falling behind and Gangplank continuing to poke out. Has not opted for a Kleptomancy here. Goes for the grass once he just went out in these landing phase trades. Setting his sights on this tower. One more creep there to make sure to block, otherwise that could have been disastrous, but Armut, 
once again dominating the top lane 1v1. But it's so interesting to see what Closer is doing. Closer may be setting up for a gank around mid lane. I believe he was seen pathing into that bot side jungle as well because now Shrimp is like, wait a second. I can just take your blue buff and your Gromp and your Wolves, potentially. Armut's super pushed in the top lane too, so there is room for Shrimp to try and burn a flash off the gangplank as well. It's a little bit peculiar that Closer has decided to effectively split the map and buy space for Pilot and Tolerant because he's leaving Armut basically out to dry. A difficult spot now. Closer coming into the mid lane. They can look to collapse here on the Nocturne. Shrimp may have overstayed his welcome. Level 4. Blast Cone there to take him out to safety. He has however. no flash though. LeBlanc behind in lane priority. Has to walk away. Seal on the way. Shrimp now running for the hills. Camille is here. Spell shield going to be important. Has to block something. Shrimp now on the run. The movement speed. Will it be enough? The Camille blocks the gold card for now. Closer chasing. Waiting for the energy. Robo may have given his life to help his jungler escape. Is it going to be enough? However, Robo runs. Flashes over the wall. Gets it out. Shrimp goes in. Trying to block. Is the spell shield up? Can Closer get this one down? Oh. The size of the trip is so perfect. I can't believe he makes it out. A greedy counter jungle, but he is not punished. Shrimp actually made it happen. Almost unbelievable right there that he pulls off the great escape. Absolutely insane that he's able to make it out there. And eventually it is a flash for flash trade. Closer loses his in the jungle, but Robo coming in to try and escort Shrimp out alive will burn his own in the process. And that said, Despite looking like a fantastic escape, the wave now pushed in. Robo really not getting a lot of CS here as Armut's going to grab another wave. And Shrimp's jungling, even though he did escape, does cost the team a lot. Cost the flash, yeah. cost the TP. I think not a worthwhile exchange. Good that he didn't die, but cannot afford to be caught out like that. You're absolutely right, because Robo's lane is looking real bad right now. Armut able to pick up so much CS pushing in towards the tower. So Robo's like, okay, my jungler's bot side again. What can I actually do? Just walks down to see if maybe a roam was going to be possible. Oh, to seal, Goku. still no flash. Chain, locked up under tower, just use blue card. They don't want to push for the dive. No don't mana. Don't want to risk it. No mana on Goku. You saw Robo also thinking about the rotation, but was spotted out on vision. Because again, Robo can't really walk into this lane. He loses in the auto for auto trades against Armut at the moment because Gangplank passive carries so much weight. So he needs the lane to come back in towards him, which thankfully it will be. But this is going to be a large advantage for Armut, which is what we expect in the Armut versus Robo, Robo matchup. But uh, definitely not to this extent. Yeah, difficult, even with the counter pick, not able to match here. Even with red side, may not be enough. Arma continues to be a massive threat and massive carry for the side of Royal Youth. So now level six achieved by Arma's GP. Level six for Seal's Twisted Fate as well. The globals are ready and all the teleports on Flamengo's side are down. So the lead is definitely with Robo in terms of the ability to make a play at the moment. They even see Shrimp on the top side of the map. So I really want Royal to seize the window you know, in the next minute or two and find a play. I think bot lane is where it starts here is you can bring all those globals down and try to catch out the lower mobility ash. As long as Thresh isn't there with a lantern, it should be an easy kill. And you can see LeBlanc covering. Really one of the only strong points for the team. Robo will go in here on Armut. Uh, Armut very cleverly just oh waiting my. for the shield to run out. Robo now going to be in trouble. Forced to ult back into the GP cannon barrage. First blood for Armut. Here comes Shrimp. Shrimp going to trade one back. Instantly cuts him down. This is what we're talking about. Having the Nocturne to try and equalize the side lane matchup. Very important for Shrimp to come here and at least get an assist over towards Robo. That matchup not going to get easier anytime soon. At the same time, Closer can respond on the bottom side of the map. Not with a kill or a fight or anything like that, but an early Ocean Drake which would be very beneficial. Now, Robo was just level fight, uh, level five at the start of this, but ticks on over. Now what happens is greed for the CS and then for the all-in, surprisingly, thinking his passive is enough to go for the fight, but that's where Armut says, no, 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 with the burn damage from Corrupting Potion as well as the passive and the ulti coming through. He finds the solo kill, but Trump able to come in clutch and equalize. Realistically, very good for Shrimp to be there to punish, but it does cost the team the Ocean Drake in the meantime, and that's going to make this top lane matchup even harder. The bigger problem now is that while Royal are able to, you know, trade kills in the top lane, they are denying bottom lane because Closer has put down pressure. They can push forward, and Lucy hasn't been super present there alongside BRTT, while his Armut, with basically no help, is just solo winning this lane is up a whole lot of minions. Checking in across the map. Have to be wondering when BRTT is going to throw out the arrow, when the team will find the opportunity to set up. So far, it's been a very reactive game for Flamingo. Goku steps forward, will leap back, closer here to try to punish, but they're not going to get much else. Just focusing on securing mid lane priority. 
to get it back for Seal. Looks like he's going to opt to stay instead. Nocturne also floating around in the area. Of course, very long cooldown on the Paranoia at early levels. The other thing for Royal in terms of trying to make a bot lane play happen is the BRTT is just never pushing down here. He's realized that he's sort of on his own, so it is slowing down the pace of this game. Royal passively gaining leads in both top lane and bottom lane. Even mid lane seal with the uh, stack deck passive and the Kleptomancy should be cashing in on a little bit extra money in an even laning state. So going neutral isn't actually the worst thing for Royal, and I think they do have a lot of good scaling options as well. Khan goes in, I'm instantly forcing the flash. Didn't look necessary. But here's the thing. There's no vision of where Closer is on the map right now. The, the river is dark right here, so it could be very likely Closer was in that in that river, waiting to land Hello. a Q. Going out, Hook does connect. BRTT can go in on the Rakan. It's going to fire the arrow. Can he actually finish this kill off, though? Because Thresh is now in trouble. The heal has gone down. Pilot now running forward. That's going to be one. BRTT could be in trouble. The pullback hasn't even been used, but the Nocturne ult comes back to dissuade any aggression, and it's going to mean Armut's death on the top side of the map. A one for one overall. Trade. Twisted Fate. Oh. Now coming in, the gold card is going to connect. Robo needs to get out. Hookshot wall dive. Not available. He's going to get taken down. The kick into the wall just to seal the deal. Closer takes down Robo. A crucial response there from Seal and Royal. Win out across the map. A straight up 2v2 down bottom side. And then Seal coming in to turn things around up top lane. This is how the global comp should be working. And we see the play top side one more time because Robo very low. So Armut thinks he is safe. He also has his jungler in the area, sustaining up a whole lot for the first damage he can't quite compete with. And Robo able to go untargetable and stay alive for quite a while. But this is where Robo stays on top of the wave, tries to flash away, but you cannot escape. Even the vision from Destiny, meaning that Seal can land the gold card when uh, Robo rather was in that bush. Yeah, Robo's going to be kicking himself for walking back into that creep wave. Closer has now started up the Rift Herald. It would be a valuable tool to break this open, and you can see on the top side of the map, Camille's now moving down to bot lane. A lot of CS going to be denied here. Hawkshot's been used. They know that this is happening. LeBlanc can step in. Nocturne can step in, but there's no ulti for the Nocturne. The gold card up and available for Seal. A lot of potential burst damage. They are just going to be able to secure this one. Shrimp's overstaying is welcome, and now the knockup's going to come through. LeBlanc not going to be able to make it out of this one. Goku goes in. The Flash goes in as well. Shrimp now in trouble. The GP Cannon Barrage zoning him away. Kick oh. goes on to the clone. Well placed by Goku. Now going to back off. A Royal completely coming out on top in that matchup. GP getting more time alone to farm up because Robo is called up. His TP instantly used right when it comes off cooldown. Yeah, I think that clone just instantly teleported back. Goku broke out of range for that one, so came in pretty clutch to block the Sonic Wave there from closer. Could have very easily been a kill for the Lee Sin. As you mentioned, though, the TP advantage is going to be very pivotal, especially because when you consider having so many globals in one game, these two teams have huge cooldowns they have to play around. Lantern's there. They're going to pull back. BRTT alive from now. Pilot stepping forward. Using the arrows, the box will buy them space, but that's a lot of blinking health bars. The rest of the team instantly collapsing onto the top side of the map. They're moving in. They're looking for those plates. Lee Sin's here as well, and the Herald is up and available. They might just be able to break this one down. That's the thing, playing around those big cooldowns. Going to be able to cash in on some turret plates as well by summoning the Herald Seals. Ultimate going to be up very, very soon. And no matter what Lucy does, there's not too much you can do to keep this tower alive, even though the rest of Flamengo is trying to rotate on up here. This tower is definitely lost. Lucy, I think baiting, hoping to get something done, but the pings are coming out. I think that's just the wrong read from Flamengo. You know, they, they waste so much time rotating both Goku and Shrimp towards the top side of the map. There was opportunity, if they wanted to, to make a response play down bottom side. And yes, they can, you know, kill this Herald and Royal don't get a second tower potentially, but I don't think that was ever really going to be a possibility. At best, Flamengo could have gotten vision on Drake, picked up the Drake, looked for a gank down bottom lane, but instead they don't trade for anything. And now Royal have extended their lead for virtually nothing. It's an excellent position for Royal now to be in. And outside of mid lane and jungle, things are quickly getting away from them. You can see the CS lead building built up by Pilot. Armut, of course, mid lane and jungle falling a bit behind, and things are going to get difficult. Defend Zion, not something that you want to see. The utility from BRTT has not really come in handy quite yet. Not out of the game nearly, but the more ahead that they get, the scarier the Twisted Fate gets, and it's going to get a lot harder to make a lot of these pick plays. Luckily, they have Nocturne Ultimate, but Shrim very much needs that to get anything done. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard, too, because I think that even if Shrimp is, is making a play, it needs to be with a numbers advantage, I feel, almost. Closer has so much power in these close fights with that Dragon's Rage kick. Well, now stepping forward. Tolerant. 
And I feel like at any moment he can fish for a play. Use Pilot as a highway, try to jump his way into this one. The additional range afforded to Zion Rakan. VRTT, you can see playing a lot more respectful. It's not the Blade of the Rune King first. Uh, it's a bit of a bits and pieces towards his next item. Interestingly, he's opted to go for a bit of attack speed as well, but wants the Essence Revert, it appears. Turret plating now fallen. Luckily, the Herald is already used. Shrimp now moves into the top side. GP, of course, can QSS a lot, or rather cleanse a lot. Will not just be able to get this Nocturne from off the of on top. So Goku is on the roam right now. They were considering something, but Shrimp just being seen on that ward is going to doom this bottom lane. BRTT and Lucy must back away from this tower, so this will go down. And this is where, once again, I think Flamengo are late to the party. Shrimp can maybe steal away a blue buff, and now he's only just looking for the dive. Goku can teleport in if they wanted to make a play, but Armut is safe up here. He can clear away the waves easily, so because Flamengo weren't willing to instantly pull the trigger, now they continue to waste more time, and even if this dive happens, and they get the tower, there's still going to be a Drake on the other side for Royal. Armand has cannon dive. He won't be able to get back under the tower, however. Just one tower shot. Armand now running the flea, coming out. Flamingo get nothing in the exchange. Now watch, Sale did have the Destiny available, so if there was an overstay on that top side of the map, he can always look for a response. The rest of Royal just grouping up, teaming up, taking down every single objective on the map. Now just two members of Flamengo, they're like frantically running towards this mid lane because this is going to take damage too. Taking complete and total control of this map. Snare will not even connect. He'll just prepping a gold card to buy space for the rest of his team to move in and start to pressure. 4k gold lead, 15 minutes into the game. Royal pulling further and further ahead. And the huge win for Royal here is they didn't even have to use any big cooldowns to make this happen. Armut used the Cannon Barrage to stay alive up topside, but Flamengo definitely spent more. All the playmaking tools for Royal are going to be up. As Goku channels his TP to try and regain some control around this middle lane. But again, it's, it's these big cooldowns that aren't being used to gain really anything. And it just, you talk about being late to the play, you talk about being late to the party, and it just feels like, uh, I think, the incorrect distribution of resources for the side of Flamingo. I think. You know, you've given enough to try to get Robo into this game. When he gets the counter pick and he's not winning lane anyway, I don't think your solution is to double down. I think you have to go bot and support BRTT. Use the arrow, you know, chain stun the Zaya or the Rakan into a kill because you saw Lucy and BRTT were close to finding that one, but they needed a little bit more to get them over the threshold. And now because of that, it just feels like Royal are so comfortably far ahead that that play might not even be on the menu anymore. Yeah, it seems like Flamengo don't really, none of the lanes are going as they expect, you know. They committed to this 2v2 in the bottom lane and ended up losing. Robo, also the same thing happened up top side. Mid lane's the only one that's going about as neutral as possible. So their, their question is, where do we actually play around? Because they've been playing around Robo, but Robo really isn't that strong relative to the state of the game. So they need to be able to find their, their punches. And I think that a, a good factor into this is to actually switch up the lanes and bring their duo in towards mid because now the threat of seal and using his destiny to either side of the map is much lessened he can only really go into the mid lane so you know a little bit more of the parameters uh, of what your opponents can actually do and while still i think even fights are losing ones for flamengo they can try to choose them a little bit more intelligently and always the potential with the ash and the nocturne to get something kicked off to find that pick obviously very difficult to lock down a lot of members of the team but the Twisted Fate seems like a vulnerable target they could look to exploit if they can find him. Lucy now stepping forward, trying to fish for the hook. It's going to connect onto closer. Maybe that's going to be enough. They're trying to get this one kicked off. The arrow goes in. The TF is on the way in, but he's in the midst of the entire team. The paranoia comes out. They're buying time. They're pulling back. Lucy not going to get hit by the Sonic Wave. So they're not able to get anything out of this exchange. The gold card connects. The hook connects as well. And now Lucy has to flash the safety. Closer goes in, and he gets knocked out on the opposite side. LeBlanc has to run for the hills. Goku going to get taken down. They move in. He's dead as well. Massive lead for Royal. Flamengo chose the fight, but again, it's not one with a numbers advantage because Seal immediately enters the fray. Now five members around this mid lane. This tower should belong towards Royal because they still have the threat to come around on the side. Kick up for closer, ult up for pilot. They can zone him away. On the feathers back, trying to clear as much space. Tolerant, we're just stepping forward. Has to be very careful though. Next wave should break this tower. Seal taking a tower shot, not ideal, but they're gonna grab that tower. Continue to extend this lead. Robo just gonna grab the, the scraps, clean up what Raptors he can. And this is just a very difficult game to watch for, for any Seabow All fans out there. I mean, really the thing is, it's been so much more decisive from Royal. This is the first time Flamengo felt like they were the ones taking charge in this game. Unfortunately for them, 
because of the twist fate, they can just respond so instantly. And the way that the terrain is sort of structured here, Flamengo are split. They have two on the left, two on the right, whereas Royal are grouped up as a four-man unit. So the second the fight looks like it's won for them, they can immediately beeline towards one of those directions, and there's no more fight left for the Brazilian side. That's really the struggle with fighting that area. They needed to pick and then get out. They could never take an extended fight. And just brutal. Because we went from, you know, 3k, 4k, maybe you can make an argument for those minutes, but this lead just continues to grow. And on the top side, though, we see a bit of a trade here. Robo trying to win the fight. Maybe he can get something done. Tower there to block, and they'll have to be very confident to go for this one. Barrel stacked. The rest of the team on the way in. Shrimp does not have paranoia, but he's trying to get here. Armut should be able to escape. Again, this is where we need to see Flamengo That's not the way make it walk. happen. Hook. Oh. Predicted the sidestep. Won't happen in the end. Now stepping in, though, should just get taken down by Shrimp. Shrimp. Missing an auto onto the minion there, but won't matter in the end. That's what we're waiting for. Flamengo on the offense. They need to choose their fights intelligently and then stem the bleeding on the other sides of the map. Use the wave clear to stop any more towers from falling down. This is step one into reclaiming some territory in this game. They will have to seed the neutral objectives for now, and doesn't look like they can hold on to mid lane just either. They sent Shrimp. They stuck him around in the top lane. They're going to try and trade that tower for this mid lane one, which in terms of overall gold is going to be good for Flamengo. They'll take all the gold they can get at the moment, but the pressure they lose might end up costing them that bot lane one too. See if the setup is there. Difficult to lock down Goku, but a gold card can do the trick. Seal. Well, it's weird because Shrimp still hasn't left top lane. He stayed for another wave, so here comes the guy! Engaged. Stun card goes in, the arrow's coming in as well. Maybe they can mitigate something. Galicia goes to the backside, but he's already been locked up. He can't find the kick. He does get it in the end. Closer now, trying desperately to escape, but he's not taking the tower. I go Seal's doing it for him. It looks like he is going to be able to make it out within an inch of his life, and another clean dive comes in from Royal. Royal get away with absolutely everything, and Shrimp finally shows up to the fight. They can try and clear the waves. Will be able to hold onto this tower, maybe not. Still going for more. Stepping forward, Royal in absolute control. Double Ocean making sure they heal up as well, can set their sights on the Mountain Dragons. Almost already pushing in topside. It just feels so much more calm from the side of Royal. They know what their calls are and they're executing on them. Possibly part of that momentum as well, picking up with a win earlier in the day against Flamengo to force this tiebreaker match. They were winless and now they could find two wins in a row because this fight was so easy for them. They know they have the numbers advantage. They make the call and even closer, is able to slip away with just a sliver of HP. It's just very clean to make it out there, to drop Tower Aggro, to trade back and forth between the team. And now Flamingo are back up against the wall. Need to find one or two more picks. Swing maybe a Baron in their way if Royal get too over aggressive, but they're kind of waiting on the enemy team to misstep to get out of position so they can punish with the Nocturne and the Ash. Royal make no more mistakes. It's going to be very difficult for Flamengo to get back in the game. So there's two plays Flamengo have right now. One is attack side lane, right? Shrimp finished off his Dusk Blade, so he does a lot of upfront burst damage. It's hard against the Ninja Tabby of Armut. That's going to be his biggest saving grace, but that is play one. And even then, they still have to worry about TPs and Twist Fate Ultimates on the other side. Play two is control a bush. Use your pick tools and find a fight, but you only find the fight if you have numbers. So it actually, it's not just control one bush, it's actually have some forward vision inside of the river as well, which is a multi-step process. And they can never get that vision unless they walk into an area with a numbers advantage. So Goku actually needs to leave top lane a lot more often than someone like Seal would because Flamengo is at a deficit. They actually need Goku to be with them if they're able to walk in, ever put down vision in the river. Robo though, starting to feel a lot more confident in the trades. Maybe he can be the difference maker. Always difficult to go matching toe to toe with the GP, especially when he's ahead of you in items and has that passive trial by fire as well. But at least able to sustain a little bit of pressure on the bottom side of the map as Shrimp waits in the darkness. Maybe not the bush you expected, but one that can work for the team. An operation attack side lane for Shrimp is even more hard because, of course, oh, oh, oh no. Gold card hits. Confirms, goes in, Goku gonna try to flash backwards. Now the snare lacks under the tower, closer gonna be in trouble, but still Ooh, take it out. We got him! Cards are gonna get it. I can't believe Royal got away with that. Just barely, and Here Seal goes TDM. in! Goes in, one more gold card. Now the support is gone as well. Royal absolutely dominating on the top side of the map. Royal are running over Flamengo, and it's through decisive shot calling and finding these fights. They knock down two members, but not willing to start it up just yet. Here goes the pick. Exposed, potentially the weak point of the map. Can they get anything done? But he's doing so much damage. He goes golden. Shrimp tries to buy more time. Armut's still alive. They're coming in. They're finding the kills closer. They turn it back. 
Five dead in the end. Royal losing one in exchange. Everything falling apart for Flamengo as Royal beat them again and again and again. And now with Shrimp dead, Royal will turn their sights to the Baron just 23 minutes in. This is the objective they need to try and punch their way to the knockout stage. Yeah, four members taken down. BRTT the only one left standing. This Baron, no chance to contest it. 9K gold advantage for Royal. 23 minutes into the game. And it was slow and steady that won them the previous matchup that brought them to this tiebreaker, but they are now playing at a breakneck pace here in their potential final game. And Royal were a team that I, I feel like no one has believed in for a long time. You know, coming into plans, people had high expectations for them. But even in the Turkish league, this was always a league dominated by names like Wolf, like Frozen, like like Zaytnot in the bottom lane. And Royal were able to take down the legendary Supermassive, the team we've seen at Worlds and International events so many times, and make names for themselves. Because not a lot of people on this team you would recognize earlier. Now, once again, it is an opportunity with players like BRTT on the other side of the rift. You win this game, you have a chance to be remembered here for moving on and potentially having a chance to make it out of groups. On the opposite side, do not want to be a team that disappoints once again. Push in, coming in with the Baron buff. Royal looking to break down this top lane tier two. This is one that I think Flamingo just have to give up. Fight instead for the inhib towers if possible. Look for that pick, look for that death rush. There it is, as you mentioned. Trying to hide in the darkness, look for a pick. It is desperation times for Flamengo. It's just about stalling now. Clear the wave as best you can. Ash can do a decent job of it with Runon's Hurricane now complete. But uh, not if you get chunked out by the minions themselves. This pilot steps up aggressively. Now Royal can really split up for three lanes. Here we go. Duncan going in on the Twisted Fate. Should be able to find this kill. Spell shield's a little bit early, but it's not going to matter too much. Gold card comes in. Will not account for much. The rest of the team now trying to collapse. Robo has to be careful. Has to pull back. Goes gold. Tries a bit more time. GBL comes in, now it's Hextech -Hex Ultimatum, now trying to leave as well, getting out. Robo will be able to escape, the rest of the team now coming in, almost teleporting in on the backside. The fight will stop for now. Camille backing, Shrimp retreating. Uh-oh, very difficult. Can he actually make it out of this one? Oh, just barely. Flamengo get the kill and get out. This is what I meant by holding on, by stalling. Now just a minute left of that Baron buff. Probably gonna need another one before Royal can look to fully close out this game, but that's exactly what Flamengo are waiting for. Attack when, when Royal go for this split siege formation. When they're split 1-3-1, opportunities are there for Shrimp. GP though, uncontested currently on the top side. The TP coming in, trying to make sure that they can break open the base. One in hip tower will now fall. GP looking for a second. Goku can just find the snare. GP buying a bit more time with the stopwatch. The retreat now comes out. They burned a lot of the engage tool. Lucy now running away, but the gold card does connect, and that means Lucy goes down. Pilot now unstoppable. Royal pushing into the base. Four members left standing for the side of Flamengo. Royal know all the spells are down for Flamengo for now. Just a few more seconds before they return. Royal with just 30 seconds left on Baron. They've got two inhibitors now. Minion waves being cleared out, but they don't look like they want to go away. Pushing in for a bit more. Are they going to play it a little more slow? They got two inhibitors. They could back off. They could look to play for the next Baron. They want the win. Yeah, they're stepping in. Pilot trying to clear this one out. Alti comes in. Have to be careful. Go ready to go in. They're taking their time, waiting for Shrimp to reactivate here. Where is Shrimp going to go? Shrimp is not reactivated. Go get Dodge. Use it. They're just trying to clear the wave. Instead, they're just focusing on extending this game as much as they can. So close there from Goku, dodging away from the quickness. Double time there with the distortion. Now Seal. Does he look for the play? Does he go for the port on in here? Minion wave is here. Baron just fell away, but they have a super to play around. It's going bot lane. They want three inhibs now. They wait Break for the off. minion wave to be there, and now they're on the towers, and Flamengo can't do anything. Coming in. Hook will not connect. Goku needs to retreat a lot of damage. Robo now going in anyway. Needs to get out of there. The knockup does manage to connect. Robo now in trouble. I don't think he can get out of this one. That's going to be it. The retreat now coming out. Too little, too late. Closer steps forward. BRTT goes down. And Royal, from start to finish, dominate in the tiebreaker. They will take down Flamengo. They will shut down the CB Law. And the TCL will move on to the bracket stage of the Play-In's 2019 World Championship. Royal Youth came into the day without a single win on the board, but they best Flamengo two times in a row, and they do it in convincing fashion to move on, Dracos. And you can say, you know, that that other game was a little bit slower, 
little bit less convincing, but here when push came to shove in the third match that these two teams would play on the world stage, Royal absolutely outclassed. And honestly, just a well-deserved win. Got to give credit to Closer. You know, solid early game performances here, but as well, the team play as a whole looked so good. And the sheer difference in top lane was just a massive factor in the favor of Royal Youth. Royal Youth were just so crisp and, and instantly making their calls. You know, everything seemed calm for them. They always knew when to go in and they pushed through Flamengo. It was just the decisiveness, I think, that I really like to see out of these playing teams because in these late game moments, you know, when we go back to having strong team fighting with globals on either side, it's about knowing where you have advantages on the map. It's about knowing the cooldowns and then acting on them. And Royal acted every single time. Absolutely did. I'm curious to see what this team brings to a best of five. We've seen so many different versions, so many different styles. Is it Arma dominating on the top side? Is he just given the GP and told to sit while the rest of the team makes the action happen? You have to find out in the games to come. And you can see the entire staff there beside them. You have to be happy because, look, historically you're like, ah, yeah, that's the expected result. But if you watch the tournament, as you mentioned, they came to the day winless, and it was looking shaky. I didn't know if it was going to happen coming out of that game with Damwon, but they managed to make it work. And at a tournament like Worlds, the only thing that matters is, is surviving to the next day, right? If you can survive to the next day, eventually you're going to find yourself in the finals and you win, right? And for now, Royal Youth, they survive to the next day. They move on to the best of fives, where again, they will be tested and will have a chance to do the same. Second seed, always difficult, though. We'll see who they draw. Good news. Uh, as mentioned, at the very start of the group stage by Armut, I believe, is uh, they can't play Damwon. So... We've been talking about it all day. Every other team has to be scared, except for them. Good luck for the TCL. Got a very difficult group. You make it out in the end, and I mean, it's actually a pretty nice bonus. In theory, when you look at the competition in these other groups, being second seed behind Damwon in Group D is the best possible position for you to have a chance to move on because of just the supremacy we've seen from that team so far in the tournament. I think that Royal Youth have proved something here today, and I don't think teams will take them lightly going into those best of fives. Absolutely not. And now, and this is the best part, is that the day's not over yet. We get to see that group draw, and we're going to find out. And there's always, dear friends, world viewers, one wild matchup. Yep. There's one where you're like, either that team is doomed or like, oh my gosh, I have no idea who's actually going to come out on top. And that's what I'm curious. I'm curious to see like who is going to get the crazy matchup. Because someone's got someone's got to play against uh, against HKA. Yeah, I'm trying to like run through them in my head right now and try and think of the, the craziest one possible. It's a tough task. Hopefully we'll we'll have some people, you know, draw some some balls and and tell you what they're gonna be so I don't have to is think of groups on the spot. Of Splice? Oh wait, that's, that's the ultimate reunion. Because here, hear me out, hear me out, right? Zerse from Chachi love, now versus to kill the unicorns. Friends. Uh, it's snakes so it. versus unicorn. That's right. It's better than Game of Thrones season eight. That's like the <laughs> most you can hope for. Oh uh, man. Hashtag scripted. And to no, think no, of it too, it it's limited possibilities. I mean, it, it's crazy too because unicorns of love, when they were in the ULCS, yes. never qualified for worlds. Zerse and Visichachi. Also, players on Unicorns Love never qualified for Worlds up until this year, so they split ways, and now they finally get to come back and prove it against each other, if we get that group. I'm hoping for it. I'm hoping for it as well. See who comes out on top. I think there's a lot to be discussed about as the groups we move out of plans. And also, kind of the respect that needs to be paid as we look at the main group stage on who's actually going to look the most solid. But Royal Youth did just make it to the knockout stage, so let's head over to Lore and their support. Thank you very much, guys, and congrats on making it to the Thank knockout. You. Oh, I mean, first impressions after today. How was it? Well, how do you feel? I'm extremely happy. Like, I can't even explain how, how happy am I, uh, I am. Like, today, I thought, like, we're all three. Like, we came all two into, into this tournament. We expected all, all three because of Don one. Uh, they're, like, really strong team. Mm -hmm. and, but we still believe that we have a chance, and actually, we made it. And I mean, that's amazing. You, I will get to see you in Best of Five series next week. Um, did, did the loss against Dam One affected you? Because you knew, maybe you knew that it was going to be a hard one. Did it affect the rest of the day, the fact that you lost to them? Because this one was harsh. Yeah, like it affected us in a good way, actually. Like okay. it didn't affect us bad. I would say like after playing against them, every game, like two games we, pl we played against them, we had like a pretty good early game. And mid-game was fine as well, I would say. 
so like this showed us that we can actually compete against the best teams. And that one is one of the best teams, obviously. So it actually motivated us a lot, like playing that good in early game against them. So yeah. In a way, good thing you won't have to face them anymore for now. Yeah. With the voice. opponents you would have to face, um, which one would be the easiest for you? I wouldn't say easiest. Like, no one is easy here. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a world championship, and I, every team is here because they uh, end up first seat in their own region. So I would say, like, uh, my like favorite team I would play against, like, love playing against, would be Unicorns of Love because, like, we're playing against them in scrims as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying playing against them as, like a lot. So yeah, I would like. There's against... C2. Oh yeah, also, yeah actually so C2, right? Okay, would be clutch okay. in this game. Yeah, yeah. So clutch it's is... either clutch, splice, okay, or HKA. Clutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clutch, clutch gaming. Yeah, yeah, we play okay. against them as well. So let's have clutch. Nice. <laughs> um, with the way you played in groups, what would you have to work on to be ready to beat clutch? For instance, um, to be ready against clutch gaming, I think uh, we have to improve a lot on communication in game. Mm -hmm. I think uh, our early game is pretty good. If we can keep that up and snowball much harder, um, I think we can make it through. Yeah. All right. Well, you have either one or two days to work on that. Is there yeah. anything you want to say to the fans who've been supporting you so, so far? So first of all, I want to thank like legit everyone who never gave up on supporting us, even though we were like all three in this. Uh, group, uh, people who supported us even when we were all three in this group are like real supporters for us, and I'm pretty sure like everyone is uh, saying thank you. Like not only me, like my whole team. Um, just yeah, like thank you so much for your support. Come on! <laughs> thank you very much, Toran, and congrats once again for thank making you. it to Knockout. Now back to cooldown. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right.